Good morning, my YouTube family, and once again, welcome back to Roger's Land Between the Lake channel. Yes, I've changed up the intro and the name of my channel, and the only reason I've done that because uh, I was getting an overwhelming amount of emails uh, to people stating, "Hey, man, it's taken me, you know, a year and a half to uh, to find you," uh, simply because they were looking for that specific title my name and where it happened land between the lakes uh, they weren't looking for uh, roger lbl and uh, i just figured you know my name was out there enough you know word of mouth you know they'd say well hey this is his channel this is what it's called you know go there but ever since uh, csi was forced forced to take my interviews down um I guess I just never thought about it. So that's the only reason I've done it, people. That's it. No uh, conspiracy behind it whatsoever. Uh, you know, obviously, because I didn't change my name or anything. Okay, this is going to be a, a rather short video uh, because I decide to, to break it up into two videos, which will obviously be a part number two. But this will be just the bare bones, uh, basically uh, uh, point A to point B uh, of my venture back to land between the lakes. And um, this will be more about uh, what I felt, the emotions, uh, the specific places that, that I did visit, uh, you know, because of, uh, because of the encounter and the attack that we had. And uh, the next video will be more in detail about the people that I met, uh, real specific places that I, that I uh, visited in Hawaii, and uh, uh, some real kind of uh, uh, neat things I found out about, um, let's just say, the, the, the people that uh, uh, inhabit or go to the land between the lakes. So you'll really get a, an eye-opener uh, on some of the stuff that I'd found out. So, um, again, uh, I, I apologize. Uh, you know, I, I've been kind of critiqued because my, my, I have such a, a monotone voice, uh, that's just me. I'm not trying to hide anything. Uh, I'm raw, unedited. Um, I'm not like a lot of those uh, podcasters and, and YouTubers out there and have a, a, a degree and a master's degree in bullshitology, okay? Uh, I just, uh, you know, I just can't, you know, sit up there for three or four hours at a time and just scream and yell and flail my hands around like a, uh, you know, like a, like, like a seagull. Uh, in a in a hurricane that's just not me so uh if you want to opt out of any of these videos even if you're a hardcore subscriber of mine no hard feelings believe me it's uh it can be tough to listen to somebody with my type of voice and um you know stay awake in the process but if you do thank you i appreciate it either way okay um without any further ado i'm gonna start from the from a to b with this and uh, and uh, let you know kind of what my feelings and stuff were of, of uh, initially going back. So um, <clears throat> I started off uh, uh, in Minnesota. It was a uh, a 15 hour car trip, um, which uh, it, it was an hour too long in my opinion. Um, I went with the uh, Shiloh and Sissies took me. Uh, we decided to do this together, like I said before. They're the ones that kind of, uh, <clears throat> you know, other than my wife, too, kind of lit, uh, lit the fire underneath my ass and said, you know what, shit or get off the pot, go. You know, we're from that area. We're going to visit family anyway. And the other reason I went the, that time of year, which was obviously late February, you know, real early March, was um, I, I, I don't want to sound like a marshmallow, but I can't stand bugs that bite you that carry diseases and i know that that's about everything nowadays but um i figure why if i can avoid it i mean i'm a woodsy guy so in the, in the summer months i i prepare for that type of thing but i don't like ticks i don't like mosquitoes um and i really don't like humidity things like that so i just was taking advantage of that and i wanted to go um before the uh, uh before the actual uh, anniversary uh, of the attack, and uh, it, it was also a full moon uh, when I went, which, the 24th, which is the, the Saturday, uh, was a full moon. I kind of wanted to experience that, um, and also the, the spring break timing kind of played a factor. I wasn't quite sure when they have spring break in that area, and uh, I heard it can, it, it's either, you know, no or go down there it's it can be dead as a doornail or people can be getting out uh, if the weather's really nice um you know 
not so much camping, but just, just flooded with people, you know, sightseers and, and people getting out. So those are the reasons why I chose that, you know, this particular time frame of the year to go. So um, get back to the, 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 uh, the 15 hour car trip. Um, we roll in to uh, Hopkinsville. Uh, it was uh, it was just getting dark. Um, it was six just a little after six. I mean, it, you you could tell the light was fading, and I thought, uh, wow, you know, I'm not going to be able to uh, uh, visit my friends uh, that evening. I was going to probably have to go back early in the morning, and then, uh, you know, you know, then be dropped off uh, on the trace to you know go to the actual uh, attack site, but. We did, um, and and another thing, really quick. Uh, most of my adventures was filmed, and uh, uh, pictures were taken, and I'm still kind of deciphering uh, which photos and uh, which uh, uh, videos uh, will be posted. Um, I am going to post some of them on my uh, YouTube post, so watch out for that. Um, but as far as the filming and the and the and the uh, photos of of myself uh, uh, at the cemetery uh, uh, outside of Hopkinsville, I'm. I'll probably never. I'll probably never release that simply because of you know just the the evil, nasty, uh, self-centered individuals that are out there that just have black hearts and all they think about is themselves and money. So uh, that's you know I don't want them. Uh, desecrating, uh, you know, the cemetery in whole, or especially um, where my friends are laid to rest. So that'll probably be off limits forever. So um, obviously, get out of the car. Uh, we go to the cemetery. They they stand back a little bit, and that's, that's when they start filming and, and taking some pictures. You know, because I, I do want it logged and and you know inventoried, so to speak. And this whole time, people, this is what has been bothering me the most. Um, uh, you know, a, a lot of people have have uh, tried to help me. Uh, I'll say pamper me by saying, you know, uh, you know, you got uh, survivor's guilt, you got PTSD. Um, I don't believe I have any of that. I, I really don't. And you know, they said, you know, what could you have done? Well, that that's the big thing. Uh, and I'm going to tell you exactly how I've been felt, uh, feeling all these years, and um, and hope it'll make a little sense to you. But um, in my mind, I was playing this whole scenario back as me being the one that was getting attacked and looking to them for help. And I could hear this in my mind. I know you're going to think this is crazy. You know, I've, I've lost my mind. But this is how this is played over and over and over in my mind. And uh, it didn't come in, in the form of nightmares or anything like that. But like I told you people in the beginning, there wasn't a day, obviously, and still isn't, that I don't think about what happened. Even though I'm not letting it, it uh, uh, what happened, the actual event, consume my life or dictate what I do in life, this particular thought always has consumed me, and it's, and it's forgiveness. Will they ever forgive me? When I see them on the other side, if I do see them, will they ever be able to forgive me? And I, I see this playing over and over, you know, help me. Me asking them for help if I was, if roles reversed. And what I was feeling in my last minutes, or would have been, knowing that, it's over. I mean, it's over and it's, you know, that person did not help me or did not try to help me. And that's what I've been living with. And it's just eating me up inside like a cancer. So that was my only uh, uh, spiritual fear because I'm not afraid of anything, man or beast event. And, and, and that happened shortly after, after the event. And you know that I've, explain what happened and why but it can be dangerous not being afraid of anything is very very dangerous but i had the fear of not the spiritual fear of not being forgiven 
the most strange occurrence that I've ever had in my life, and even with the attack included, happened at that cemetery. It was only for, for two or three seconds. But as soon as I kneeled down in front of him, my knee hit the ground, and it, and I went back. It was, and again, this is going to sound crazy, but I can only equal it to people that have, uh, I've heard that, you know, say they've taken LSD or acid or mushroom. I don't know, maybe all that shit's the same. But anyway, um, you know, kind of a psychedelic experience. And I went, within two or three seconds, I went from present time to the attack happening and back to present time again. And during that little bit of time, it was bright and I seen them, but I didn't see the, the, them as in the attacks, you know, being attacked. They're, they were smiling, they were happy, they weren't saying anything, but I could see their faces. And and even though they didn't say it, I felt forgiveness. Just me getting that feeling, even if it was a false sense. Uh did wonders for me, people. I mean it it, it set me free inside. Because I didn't see, um, you know, the horror, the, the, the uh, you know, the pain, the grimacing face that, that if I would have stayed and tried to help him. And, and people are, you know, have also said, well, you could be there laying next to him. You know, you, you couldn't have done nothing. And, and all, this, all this time I thought, maybe that's what should have happened. But then I looked back and I see my wife, my beautiful family, everything that I, I have accomplished and I still have to accomplish. And I know they wouldn't have wanted that. But <sighs> leaving that cemetery with, I, I don't know, even the false sense, but even the sense of them forgiving me for abandoning them um, has has turned a new light on for me. Okay, moving on. Um, next morning, uh, uh, Shiloh dropped me off uh, on the Woodland Trace. And I didn't want to be seen, you know, walking the roads or anything like that. To, you know, and I, I mean... To be honest, there was a couple people I was hoping to, you know, possibly run into down there, but you know, in reality, that probably wouldn't have been a good thing. And just, it's just better that that you know, I just use common sense and focus on what I was there for. And here again was was a weird feeling because I I kind of remember where it was at, but if it wasn't for something just just for a split second guiding me towards the the where the entrance was. Um, I, I wouldn't, uh, I mean, I would have eventually found it, but it would have taken me a long time, but it was ju just an ever so slight, uh, uh, indentation of where a drive used to be, uh, at, you know, in the, uh, the beginning of the uh, tree line. And once I actually got back in there, I knew it, I could feel it. I knew I was there and I can tell you 100% people um, and I'm not just saying this to throw everybody else off, but there has been absolutely nobody back where the original attack happened. Now, there may be somebody that walked through, you know, just randomly hunting or, or whatever and not known where they were at. And that's why I kind of smacked myself in the face. Th those two years or two and a half years I spent being pissed off at people telling them you're not in the right place you're lying you're lying you're not in the right place uh, you know hindsight's 2020 20, as they say i should have been happy and i am now that they have never been to the actual attack site 
Um, I mean, they can desecrate it with their terminology. I've had it with that. You know, I'm just looking beyond that. But for me to know that nobody has been back in there knowingly, I it was it, that was I I smiled. I literally smiled. Um, so I stayed two nights uh, in a sleeping bag with a with a little makeshift uh, uh, tarp over top of me. And let me tell you, I I don't know why I was so naive to think. Uh, uh, Kentucky and Tennessee doesn't get cold at night because it gets cold, or it was then anyway. And uh, the days were kind of blah. I mean, they got up into the 50s and 60s, <coughs> excuse me, you know, kind of overcast. But uh, the nights were damn cold. Uh, I, I should have brought a little bit, a little bit more. But um, so I looked, it took me about 45 minutes, and I found the actual spot where it happened, where the motorhome was. And I had a little uh, a collapsible shovel with me. And I know I've criticized a lot of people uh, for, you know, tearing up ground and digging and stuff. So that this will be a hypocritical statement, and I admit that. But I wanted to make sure. So I dug down about uh, six or eight inches, and I dug about 24 inches around in a square, like if you were pulling a piece of sod out. And sure enough, I found it. I, I literally said, holy shit, and I got a shiver this is it and because if you remember i had said they had used uh, like a peat rock or a lime rock or whatever uh base for the the campers to pull in on i found it absolutely found it so i put everything back in uh tucked it away nice buttoned it up and you couldn't even tell i was there but i i did i did dig that area up um I was I was anticipating this this whole time even before the trip and before I was actually going to sleep there on the actual spot I was in, anticipating something um, something to go go bad I don't know if it was spiritual or something to uh, come out after me but I, I just I I didn't care and like I said I wasn't a, wasn't afraid of that happening happening I just anticipated it but nothing happened absolutely nothing happened people the whole time i was there i was there just under a week by the way and i did not see or hear anything that was out of the normal um normal habitat uh you know then seeing a, a few human beings of course but the only thing that surprised me was just the massive amount of coyotes i i didn't hear a single wolf i you know obviously know what they sound like but the coyote population within the land between the lakes must be just thousands i mean i'm not trying to exaggerate but uh even during the day i was hearing them okay uh and you know no it wasn't anything cryptid or inhumanoid following me it was is I, I never actually seen them to be honest never seen the coyotes but you could just hear them all the time um and that was kind of strange because i figured uh, in an area like that uh, i'd be seeing a lot of birds smaller game you know smaller uh forest creatures so to speak um squirrels rabbits things like that but hardly any i mean hardly any maybe that was just the time you know the time of the year for down in that area but um, i did see a feral hog which was cool as shit uh it was it was a ways off probably 75 yards off but i seen it just blowing by and no there was no 12 foot you know monster with eight eight inch long fangs chasing it just whatever reason it was running um, the deer that you seen on my very first uh, kind of, uh, I guess, hint, hint video of where I was at, that thing was within 10 or 15 feet of me when I popped my light on. It act, it didn't even act like uh, it cared that I was there. That was crazy. Um, and uh, seen a couple raccoon, uh, but, but really, that's about it. That's all the wildlife I've really seen and, and uh, heard. I didn't hear nothing breaking through the timber at night or... Or howl or not, you know, something odd howling or weird, any, anything, just nothing weird like that. Um, so after I spent uh, the night there uh, for the two nights, um, I went ahead and ventured on. And this is where I'll probably cut it off and, and wait till my next video. So this doesn't just keep going on and on. But I tried to, I tried to stick to kind of the, uh, the north, northeast side by the Cumberland River. And um, I did go kind of southeast, and I went over by, or down by um, Energy Lake. And there's a story, story, uh, a reason behind me going 
specifically to that area and it has to has to do with this rock and who I meant uh, to guide me to this particular rock and just real quick I, I think I did mention it but um, this rock is called uh, uh, God, I can't even think of it. Uh, Afriolite, I think it's called. I know I butchered that. But um, it's not real common in that area. But uh, it's uh, people that believe in uh, spirit healing and things like that. Um, that's what uh, uh, people collect, even little tiny pieces of this. And this is a five and a half pound chunk. I weighed it. And what it was doing where she told me it would be is, is just just crazy unbelievable but anyway that story will be for uh the second video um but the place is absolutely beautiful um as you'll see in some of the pictures i'm going to post uh, i visited the hotel california and other places um i visited uh uh the ravine um i went back to the ravine and just real quick i i i did send this particular photo to a certain person just for proof that you know, think about this and where this is positioned. There, you know, now this this particular area where it happened, um, it's not right off the road. I mean, I had to walk back in there quite a ways, and I'm not going to give exact specifics. People, you know, get smart, start to, you know, put in pencil to paper and figure it out. But why would somebody, and this has to do with, what, you know, when the, uh, uh, the hybrid was actually... Uh, you know, shot and it ran down the ravine then up the other side and into this this large tree, which if you remember, I said it, it was sawed down like three days later. Um, but we're talking, it's back in there, uh, I'll just say an eighth of a mile, okay? I'll just throw that number out there. And nowhere else around, nowhere in this area, or any of the other areas really that 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 were that deep, that far deep into the uh, into the timber, was there a tree that was felled by a human being? In other words, sawed down. You can obviously tell this was sawed down with a chainsaw, which it was. Okay. In the middle of nowhere, over an eighth mile away, who would go in to the timber and find this specific tree, cut it down? And then guess what? Haul it out. There is not a single remnant of a tree, you know, them uh, cutting it and, you know, a falling over, decaying or anything like that. Like you'd normally see, you know, people cut down a tree and, and they'll leave parts of it or if it just falls over naturally. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's just a nice, smooth stump that's probably, you know, 25 inch in diameter. It's huge. Probably the, the would have been one of the biggest trees there yet if it was still alive, hadn't been cut down. But think about that. Who and why? It just doesn't make sense. It just flat out does not make sense for anybody to do that specific act, that specific tree, and it just be gone. Okay. Uh, it, it, I'm just telling you, it didn't happen. The reason why it's not there is because. That was the tree that the, the hybrid was killed in, and the evidence was to be uh, taken away, and it was. So, anyway, um, the other places I visited, like I said, Hotel California, um, and uh, I visited the bus that's out there, abandoned bus, and I'll show you pictures of that. And there's that kind of correlates with the story of this rock and a person that I'd met down in the timber. So, um, that's it, people. I don't want to get uh, too yappy with this and, and bore you, but it was a good trip. The place is absolutely beautiful. Um, I felt absolutely no anything, nothing out of the normal the almost week that I was there. The several people that I talked to, um, you know, that had been there, year, I mean, years and years and years, 30, 40 years, um, has never seen or heard anything out of the normal. In the land between the lakes so i guess it's just uh i guess just maybe uh the, the specific people that are going there are are uh hearing and seeing things i guess right i don't know i, I throw my hands up in the air but that's it for now i appreciate it so much that you, you took the time to listen to this uh uh you know this kind of little boring story but um it's true and it means a lot to me 
and the uh, the main part of me going back to the land between the lakes was not so much to go back to that area uh, for the attack or because of the attack, but it was to see my friends and uh, say I'm sorry. That's it, people. Thank you so much. As always, God bless, Godspeed, and we'll talk again.